Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Napoleon Bonaparte agrees. Say no way. more. Say no Today, more. Today, Brad, we're going to talk about shoulder pain. Uh, Ten signs that you're about to, your shoulder pain is about to become a rotator cuff tear. Oh, and we do not like tears. No, and you know a lot of people think that tears occur. Uh, by the way, let's first back up and say the rotator cuff is four muscles sure. that, that surround your shoulder and help it work. But a lot of people think a tear comes from like a traumatic event, like falling on the shoulder. Right. No, the vast majority of them occur from degeneration, aging, and wearing it out. Repetitive motion. Repetitive motion. Right. Yeah. I mean, and it, it and it might have been started, and you fall, and that was kind of the what what actually broke it. I already injured tendon. Right. Yeah. It, um, if you've already started to degenerate, and and then you fell, and you could. But right. the, I'd say the majority that I see, Brad, mm -hmm. are just. It just happened. A guy right. was maybe lifting something. And, right. And, or they, it just started hurting and it's been getting worse yeah. over the last three months and now I cannot even lift my hand. So they, help, they happen spontaneously, which sure. is kind of scary. By the way, Brad, if you are new to our channel, I know you're not, but I, some of those no, people might right. be. Well, there's three people right there. Yeah. Uh, please take a second to subscribe to us. we got a subscription button over here or down here. Mm -hmm. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Excellent. I think, Brad, it, it would be helpful to show how how this degeneration happens a lot right. of times in the shoulder. This so, poor guy lost his arm. Yeah, <laughs> this is a bad sign too if you lose your arm. Okay. So one of the muscles, let's just talk about one of the muscles. Right. S supraspinatus muscle. It's right up in this gap here. Yep. Right, okay. right under Gumby's leg here. And it helps your arm do this. Yep. Helps to bring it out to the side. It is a rotator cuff muscle. The tendon is represented by this red tubing right here. It comes underneath the acromion here. And also the coracoid acromial ligament. Right. So right under here and here. And so here you have your shoulder right here. And it can actually, as it comes up over the top right here, it can get pinched in here. Right. And that's yeah, can, you, can you move your finger a sure. little bit, Bob? So, so, oh, oh, put it hold, like this. Hold maybe? the tendon. Yeah. yeah. So it's when you're going up like this, you can see how that can get pinched. We need a gap so that... There's that, plenty of room. Right, exactly. And that gap is provided by the rotator cuff muscle, muscles working properly. When they drop, they call that the caudal glide of the humeral joint. I remember that from school, Bob. Yep. And that maintains that gap. So rotator cuff strength yep. and coordination is important. Exactly. It's important the muscles are working together and keeping that gap so that it doesn't pinch. And we're going to show you some of the signs that it is pinching. Sure. That you're going to know. Um, and those are the things that are worrisome because that means if it's pinching, it's starting to fray the tendon. It's mm -hmm. like fraying a rope, and eventually the rope gets frayed all the way, and there the tear occurs. And that's where it happens. It ha doesn't happen on the muscle itself. It happens on the tendon of the muscle. Right, right so. where that, that pinching. So this is like, you know, associated with uh, shoulder impingement. So let's talk about some of the things, Brad, that you know are signs that it may be happening. First off, if you're just having, you know, if you're having a dull ache deep in the shoulder, mm -hmm. I'm starting to worry that you know that might be the rotator cuff, and and um, yep. that may be one of the signs. Sometimes you won't feel it at that point, but it might be down a little bit, right down here. People often kind of come, it hurts right there, which it seems unusual, but a it's, specific spot actually, right, right here. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's a referral pain. Yeah. Yeah, pain uh, refers from you know quite often the pain doesn't feel where you where the problem is. It's 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 down further. Mm -hmm. um, if you're over age 40, which shows you again, this is a degenerative process. Sure. You know, when you're younger, um, you, you know you can take a lot and and the things aren't starting to wear out yet. Yeah. But as take it from Brad, who are way on the other side of age 40. Yeah. We, uh, we it, know things are working. <laughs> Uh, also, it really makes sense that if you do a lot of overhead work, if you're an auto mechanic, mm -hmm. if you're a house painter, uh, what's it called, the guy that lays sheetrock? Sheetrock. Or sheetrocker? Rocker. <laughs> um, <laughs> drywall, whatever. Drywall, yeah. Overhead work, washing yeah. windows. Carpenter. Oh, yep. I mean, all these things, and if you're doing it on a repetitive basis, I don't know what to say if you do it, because, you know, I don't know well, how to get away from it. Well, we've got some exercises that can help. Okay. If you find out that suddenly it's becoming difficult to comb your hair yep. or reach behind your back, so one arm goes to here and the other one goes to here because of pain. Right. This was a good sign that it's got a problem. I can reach up to here, my thumb here only goes to the belt line, and this hurts up here when that happens. Yep. Yep. That means that things aren't moving like they should be, and that's where you're going to want to do some of the exercises for impingement. Right. Because things are getting pinched. 
And if they, they keep getting pinched, they're going to tear eventually. Right. So that's, it's just a matter of that's how things work. Um, if you play a lot of sports that involve overhead, especially repetitive activities, right. tennis, sure. you know, you're doing the overhead. Uh, if you're a pitcher. They know all about these things. I mean, they're pretty well aware yeah, of they're, they're, it. Yeah, pitchers are generally aware if, of it. If you've been pitching for any length of time. The one that uh, you may not be aware of, where's our, our bar, Brad? Oh, yeah. You know, Brad and I, and this is a little controversial, Brad, but um, we, w Brad and I do not recommend doing overhead, uh, what are you called, shoulder presses? Oh, right, yeah. military press. Military presses, we, we, do, we don't recommend doing those. Right. I mean, I mean even with good form because sure. it's just putting too much uh, risk and too much possibility of, of right. a, and even behind here, yeah, it's especially even worse. Behind, yeah. yeah. Now you can do them, and you'll do fine with them. But after doing them for many years, then you might say, "Geez," and we get people that write back and they say, "I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I wish I would have seen your video ten years ago." And I can quote, I can go back and quote those. Yeah, it's it's a matter. Of, you're going to think you're right now. Uh, Right. But you'll come back and talk to us in 10 years from now, and you'll be... Wait till you get over 50. Yeah, you, you would have wished uh, that you would have listened to us. Um, there's one thing you can't control, Brad. Sometimes the bones here are a little bit curved, right. and there's less space there because of it. Right. Um, you can't help that. That's a genetic yeah. component. Right. There's a little hook on there, they yeah. call that, and it creates an impingement problem, which can irritate the rotator cuff tendon. Uh, they can go in and do surgery on that, however. It's, it's not a big deal, but it's nice to avoid. All right. If you're having pain with any of these tests, Brad, uh, that means you might be starting to get you know, some impingement. Um, you might even already have a, a slight tear. Sure. So let's show right. the test, Brad. I'm going to have you stand up. Okay. Okay. The first one is you're going to bring the arm out a little bit and flexed a little bit, thumb down. Okay. Yep. And I'm just going to push on it. Now, it might not give way, it just might hurt. Oh. Yeah, and that means that you're already probably getting some stress on the tendon, right. and that already you're gonna wanna do some of our- this, The empty can. Yeah, test. the empty can, right. and we're pushing yep. on it. Yep. It's for the supraspinatus. Right, it which is it. most commonly injured. Exactly, that's the most common one by far, I right. think. So, mm -hmm. the other one, Brad, is just put your hands out like this, Okay. and I'm gonna go ahead and push them together. Uh, and almost always, I've seen this over the last 20 years, you do that, and the arm that's involved, go ahead and do it again. Yeah, one gives way. And it hurts, and it's, not, it's weak. Again, it's a sign that that one might be uh, you know, already involved. There's mm -hmm. already some tendonitis, right. and, and, and there may be a little pinching on the, on the tendon. Sure. Um, you could do the drop arm test, but that's, um, I, I, and I, what I would look for that is you actually could bring it up and then have them lower it down. And I, I would say, let's say the arm doesn't even drop, Brad, but it's, you're already starting to do yeah, compensate. Yeah, compensate. Right. It's not a smooth motion. Like, so you compare the two sides. I bring this one up, and good thing I used deodorant today, right, Brad? Or you better bleed. Yeah. Um, so this, you bring this one down, nice and smooth, sure. right? And then you do this one, and it, you know, they do that yeah. weird thing where they're they're compensating right. for it. That means that already something's going on. You're getting some pinching. You're not. You might not be that far away from a, a, a injury, a right? Cup tear. Yep. Cat got your tongue bone? Yeah, that one got me on that one. I'm sorry about it's that. It's usually one. around 90 degrees, right around in here. It'll go good, and then it'll feel better. Uh, number eight, Brad, is a painful arc. So um, if you bring it up, and it hurts, 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 and then it releases, yep. that means it's pinching on a certain part of the tendon, sure. actually. So that, that's a good indicator that, you know, and especially if you have it on one side and not on the other. It's kind of similar to what we just went through, but it's the opposite direction. Instead right. Instead of coming down or You're or bringing it up, up and you're going, ow, 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 ow. Or if the other alternative, Brad, is you bring it up and it doesn't hurt, all of a sudden it hurts all up in this range. Sure. That's a different, it's all different parts of the tendon that, that indicate right. where that's going to be at. You know, it's, it's in the mechanics of it. Right. Um, if you have a tendency to lift heavy objects with your arm straight, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're picking up a suitcase and, uh, you know, again, what I always tell people, Brad, these are small muscles lifting, a, you know, ha handling a big, long lever arm. Yep. So the other one that, uh, the one that I see more often than that, this, uh, Brad, is people, they reach into their back seat. Mm -hmm. and, and now you got, your, your arm is not at an advantage, it's got a disadvantage, and you've you got the arm straight. Right. And you're trying to lift something out of there. Exactly. Good way to get a rotator cuff tear if you're trying to get it's one. It's the most unstable position of the shoulder, shoulder is back like this. And then you put weight on it besides plus. And you're got externally it. rotated and it's yeah. just, it's just a, it's, a bad thing. 
On the last thing, Brad, is that might help you lead, lead you towards getting a rotator cuff tear if you're trying to, <laughs> is to actually uh, sleep on that shoulder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that, that is also going to, you know, especially if you tend to sleep right on the point of the shoulder. You want to grab a couple pillows, Brad, because we can show them the correct way. Sure. So if you tend to sleep right on that shoulder, yeah, you're going <laughs> to, here they come, incoming. <laughs> Very lucky I didn't get a rotator cuff tear grabbing onto those. <laughs> Yeah, take one more. Go. I'll hand you that one. So uh, if you want to sleep in a uh, way as to, to not put pr pressure on your rotator cuff, I want you to put two pillows here, uh, which helps fill in this gap of the neck because you right. don't want to have your neck going this way or this way. You want it right in the middle. And then you can put like a throw pillow here or you can put a regular pillow here. Sure. Mm -hmm. I use a throw pillow, just a little one. And I do this one all the time. I just lay on my side like this. It forms a nice tunnel for you. Yep and you're taking some of the stress off that shoulder. Right, so the body pressure goes into the ribs here and the head. And, and the head and yeah. less onto the shoulder. Sure. And you're, and you're allowing that shoulder to heal at night. Ideally, you don't want to be on it at all. I mean, if, right. if you have a painful shoulder, sleep on the other side. And, and what's nice is if you, you can do this, you can put a pillow underneath the arm like this and, and support it this way. Ideally, you'd even have two pillows, one hole in it there and one like that. Yeah, get a lot of pillows. Yeah. <laughs> We've just bought stock in pillow companies, so we want you to buy a lot of pillows. Oh, so. yeah. And remember, Brad, we're not just pretty. I keep thinking we're pretty ugly, but you say that's not right. That's not right. We're pretty handy because uh, well, that's, that's a, what our wives say about right. us, right? If, 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 you, if they don't love you for your money, they love you because you're handy. That's right. You can't be handsome. you got to be handy. Isn't oh, that that's Red right. Says? Red, green. There you uh, go. All right. Thanks for watching, folks.